Hey everyone, it is great to talk to you again today. First off, I haven't had a chance to get in front of this camera because I've been under the weather for a few days. So I have some quick takes on the Hoosier game before I head into the game against the Hawkeyes. You know, first big question was which big man Zach Eady, Zidi, or Trace Jackson Davis, TJD, would outduel the other in the Hoosier game back on Sunday. You know, a funny thing happened, though, during the game. I really felt let down as Trace Jackson Davis is not quite the player I expected to see. I think we caught his B game, maybe not his A. I expected a superstar, and what I saw was not that. Yep, he's great at flopping. Even the announcers couldn't figure out whether it was flopping or just great acting. He knows how to bowl through people to get free throws. Yeah, a couple moves impressed for sure, but truthfully he made fast break points and a few lob dunks, but otherwise he was just a bull in a china shop. Now that's hard to say about a guy who scored 25, but the thing that unimpressed me the most was that he literally disappeared when his team needed him in the second half. The last 10 minutes of the game, he was invisible. Maybe it is just me, but I guess I expected more game from him as the game went along, and it just kind of disappeared. ZD, on the other hand, pretty much scored at will and outscored Davis by eight. Zach also had double the rebounds of TJD. Player of the year is exactly what he looked like, although, you know, TJD is just a slight step below him. He's still a great player. I'm not taking anything away from him. Just wasn't his best game, I thought, even though he scored a lot. Now, that being said, I expected a fairly close game in which Indiana would probably win it. And sure enough, the stats don't lie. It was close. Stats at the end of the game show a very close battle with both teams shooting just about 50%, slightly above that, 51-52 range. The game came down to a couple of factors. Of course, the number one, and everybody's been talking about it, free throws. <laughs> Look at these numbers. Purdue's free throws were atrocious, of course, but if both teams shot 75%, Purdue wins the game. But Indiana shot 83%, Purdue shot 59%, and that might be the entire number one thing that lost the game for them. Factor number two, turnovers. Yes, Purdue had 16 of them. Indiana only had eight, half of theirs. That is why Indiana won this game. Indiana absolutely deserved this win, but coming to Mackey in a couple of weeks, it's going to be a different story. As you can believe, the Purdue faithful will be up and roaring, and Purdue will probably play better for the entire game instead of a five-minute stretch where they pretty much lost it. All right, enough of that game. Can Purdue rebound at home against Iowa and their high-powered Ken Palm number one offense, or would they lose two games in a row? You know, Purdue's offense is no slouch as they are number two in Ken Palm. Plus, the Boilermakers are 20th on defense. Now, the Hawkeyes, they've heard about defense, and I hear they have a great half-court, uh, full-court press, but are somewhat against it. So, defense, that is. Will Purdue cut down on turnovers? That's the last big question. And can Purdue hold Chris Murray from lighting the house on fire, as some stars can do at any time? Here's what I saw. As it happened, and these are exactly what my notes said. All right. First possession, and Purdue turns it over for a fast break bucket for Murray. Both questions look ugly already that I already talked about. As the game progressed, Iowa actually looked like they were trying to play defense in the first three minutes of the game, yet Purdue scored 10 points. Four from Flash, a.k.a. Fletcher Lawyer, and two smooth threes from Smitty, a.k.a. Braden Smith. You know, Purdue is up 10-2 at the 1636 mark, and I had to think about this. The freshman guards are the show so far. Iowa starts one for six shooting, and as they go into the first TV timeout, Flash drains a three, and after another miss by Iowa and a fast break turns into a Caleb first basket and a chance for a three-point play with a foul called, Purdue's now up 15-4. to four. ZD has not even scored in the game yet at the first timeout. So, on cue out of the timeout, though, ZD gets the offensive rebound and scores a deuce off of the first missed free throw. All cylinders are firing to start this one as it is 17-4 Boilermakers. Now, the next timeout comes at 10:41, and the score is 22-11. It's apparent that Iowa is trying to get into the lane for some mid-range jumpers, which they have made a couple, but ZD swatted a couple away. They're trying to, to shoot over ZD and not get close to him. One, though, he's swatted into the bleachers of those swats. 
The under eight minute timeout comes at 744. It's apparent that these Big Ten officials are now allowing the guys down the paint to hammer each other pretty badly. TKR is getting hooked and pushed everywhere, and so is Edie. Only two fouls total have been called so far in the entire game, with a lot of heavy contact in the paint. Yet Purdue is up 27 to 17. Now, it was pretty funny. At the three minute and 50 second mark, the referees finally called their fourth foul of the 30 that had already been committed. And guess who it was on? Yeah, it was on Zach Eady. ZD. <laughs> He's been getting doubled and tripled and slapped and bumped, hooked and harmed, but he's the one who gets the foul called against him. <laughs> it was a foul, but we got to call them all, and they are not doing that at all. <laughs> Going to the half, it's 38-21 to 21, Purdue, and Purdue is shooting 44% while Iowa is shooting 29%. Purdue is 6-for-17 on three-pointers while Iowa is 1-for-10. And Purdue is scoring at will as a team and as several guys have like 7 to 10 points. And none of them are named Zach Eady. <laughs> Braden Smith, Smitty has 13 points at the break. And Iowa went with the poison of trying to double and triple Zedi. And the shooters and assassins of Purdue made them pay. Let's see what happens in the second half if there are any changes and adjustments by either team. And I'm sure there will be. The first break comes at 13.06 and Purdue is now up 57 to 39. They're getting plenty of open shots with the full court press that Iowa is trying to do. Iowa hit six shots in a row to keep the game close when they were down by 21 at one point. But no one can stop Smitty, who now has 22 points and four assists. As the score got to 64 to 46 around that time frame. You know, the two teams are a combined 21 of 27 shooting in the second half. It looks like a track meet out there. Which team will slow down first was my thought. Now, Iowa literally closes the game up to 70 to 60 and have scored like 39 points in the second half. They're shooting a crazy 16 of 20, and a lot of the shots have been pretty tough shots too. This is midway through the second half, pushing towards the latter half of that. The crowd is getting chippy and chirping at the refs as there are plenty of raw fouls going on, and they are calling nothing against Iowa. Somebody literally just hip-checked Morton into the seats after a pass is what I wrote, and the rest just said, play on, basically. Purdue has nine turnovers already in the second half, but went to ZD two times in a row to get the score back to 74-64. ZD now has his 20th double-double of the year and leads the nation in that category with just a few minutes left. You know, I hate complaining about the refs, but these guys are awful. The Hawkeyes have been allowed to maul Purdue defensively. Then Chris Murray just misses a jumper at the elbow, and nobody touches him. But there's a foul called, so he gets two shots. It's crazy. Purdue is up by 16 with 38 seconds left, but that is an awful call, especially late in the game, any time in the game. They will not call a foul on Iowa, who's beating up on Purdue on the full court press. It's awful, awful, awful is what I wrote down. Purdue still wins 87 to 73, and they improved to 23 and 2, 12 and 2 in the Big Ten Conference, and they're the leaders. You know, my first thoughts after the game, other than the terrible referee, and it was a pile of manure, every single other commentator I saw thought the same exact thing. All right, moving on. Purdue showed they could play at any tempo and at any style of basketball. They proved they are not a one-trick pony, not for the first time, but this is again and again they have proven this this season. Even when the other team was full court pressing them the entire game, they scored 87 points. Plus, five guys, count it, five guys scored in double figures, and that screams team play. So, pick your poison every single night is what teams have to do. I kept hearing that everybody says there's a big question about the freshman guards, who tonight's Tonight scored only a 41 points. <laughs> you truly only have that question if you haven't seen them play. All right, how about this? 17 turnovers, not good. Mostly in the second half also. Could have led to a different outcome. Meanwhile, Purdue turned it over like a, a hot potato, basically. And yet they also scored very easily off of the same full court press. You know, many times guys had wide open shots and they knocked them down. Iowa also, though, shot lights, lights out in the second half and still didn't have enough to come back and beat Purdue. Now, here are some more stats for you. Here's the first one I love. 
Two guys with double doubles. Hot diggity dog. How many times can we do that? You're going to win a lot of games that way. Individual stats are strong also, though. Let's start off with Smitty, of course. He led in points, 24. Five assists, four rebounds, and he was four for five from three-point range. Eight for ten total for the night on shooting. Wow. ZD, 14, 14, and four, and he also had five blocks and his 20th double-double, which leads the nation. No one seemed to talk about Flash, though. Yet he had 17 and four. What? 17 points and no one noticed? That's nuts. After the first part of the game, anyway, when he was really involved. First was had 11 and 10 for his third double double. Man. Also, G Man chipped in or uh, chipped in 10 points and four rebounds. And Morton had five points, four rebounds, and three assists. Come on, man. That's a little bit of everything. Purdue shot 91% from the free throw line. What a difference from the game before. And Purdue crushed Iowa 43 to 23 on the rebound edge, plus 20. Now, after the game, Coach Painter said he would love for Braden to shoot more. His first instinct is to get others involved. And I've heard him say this also earlier in the season. Now, Coach went on to say that Iowa is a team of runs, and you don't want it to be 40 minutes of that, of course. But if the game is tied at halftime, it may have been a different outcome. Now, Coach Painter said on the second half, we worked hard to get into a great position. We simply could not stop them. But the good news was they couldn't stop us either. <laughs> he went on to say that the double teamed basically Zach Eady every single time, and they still scored 87 points. That's a positive. All right, so there was a lot happening. The refereeing was awful. I hate to say that, but it was, and they Purdue still won. So that's it for now. Guess what's up? Northwestern is on Sunday. I'll see you next time with that game.